Hoi there, it's Skyward Shield. Welcome to Football Talks. I am joined by Bill. Say hello, Bill. Hey, yo! All right, so week seven is in the books. Let's move on to week eight. But before we do that, let's recap some of these games, starting with those Detroit Lions, Bill. Three-game winning streak. All games that they've won have been close. They win another one against the Washington football team, the former uh, division champs. So, Bill... <laughs> Did you did, was there a sh was there a part of you that thought oh no this is oh it's over they, these lions are done as as a Detroit fan and a Lions fan a Detroit Lions fan any time that they have a lead and the other team comes back I kind of expect it because I'm a shell shocked freaking Lions fan uh, and it's happened to the Lions over and over numerous times in their history and I sort of expect it by now but you know uh, it didn't surprise me but what surprised me was how the game ended and that was the biggest surprise of all yeah the first half was a total snooze fest more <laughs> looking like wasn't sure if it was good defense but by, by two not so good defensive teams or just bad offense from teams with high was, offensive capabilities, or possibilities, I, I should say. I would say it was pretty good defense by two really bad defensive teams. I, I I, honestly think that the Lions played their best defensive game against the Washington offense. Uh, they played their best defensive game uh, of the year so far this year in this game. But, Bill, uh, things changed when it took an injury to go to happen for the Washington football team and Josh Norman out for the game with the concussion. I hear, I hear he's back for this next game against Cincinnati, but it was it was perhaps one of the biggest plays of the game, where Marvin Jones gets a deep pass from Matt Stafford, connects, and um, uh, Norman can't really wrap around him, and as a result, he lands uh, he lands headfirst onto the turf. Which I'd like to. I'm not sure what would be worse for your head to land on: artificial turf or natural turf. I wouldn't. Artif artificial bio. I I would say artificial because the, with the concrete underneath that, there's really no give. Whereas the actual ground, it has a little bit of give to it. You know, I mean, falling on the ground, it's still not. It's still not a good thing to do but you know overall you know your head will have a little bit more of a cushion to fall into rather than oh my head just banged right off the concrete floor yeah so when Josh Dortmund went out that pretty much changed the game for Detroit their passing game was now open they are able to get more throws to Marvin Jones and Golden Tate much better than before but, Bill, as far as I'm aware, and I think we're starting to really cash in on this theory that the Panthers were better off with Josh Norman on their team. Oh, yeah. They should yeah. have franchise tagged him or kept it on him and paid him like an all-star because that's what he's been for Washington. He's been, after those first couple games when they started, when they went on this four-game winning streak, he's been playing uh, at an elite level. And the Carolina Panthers, who are 1-5, I'm pretty sure if they had him, they would have at least won one more of those games. Not sure against two, but they would have had a win, an, another win under their belt. Right. I, I would agree. Yeah, and honestly, they're wasting... Like, I don't know why you're letting other back uh, surrounding talents on either side of the ball go to waste when Cam Newton's already hitting his prime years. You don't want to waste them. That's, I think that's yeah. also why Seattle's kept all of their players, most or most of their players, their core players on their roster, and as a result, they're always a play, uh, deep playoff contender because they I, don't wait. They're not wasting Russell Wilson's prime while they still have it. I would agree with that uh, statement. Yeah. Damn right. So, Bill, but if we're talking about people hitting their stride, Matt Stafford getting that touchdown to Anquan Bolden. If that oh, ball yeah. were any bit slower, it would have been batted down, and it would have been fourth down and ten. 
Yep. I mean, overall, it was a really gutsy play by Matthew Stafford. But Matthew Stafford has been making gutsy plays his entire career. If you really look at his career, he's the fastest to, what, 27,000 yards in NFL history. He's had 24 fourth quarter or overtime comebacks. Well, he has, he has um, the most in NFL history. 24 out of 100. 24% of the games, he's led a comeback or a, a comeback in fourth quarter or, or overtime. And that's that's an uh, astonishing stat right there. Well, Bill, this he's, is what we call the comeback kid. Right. I mean, but overall, Matthew Stafford this year is playing at an elite level, better than last year's MVP Cam Newton in all statistical areas, minus one rushing touchdowns. But Matt Stafford has a better completion percentage, a better touchdown number, and less picks than Cam he has. Newton uh, had in, this. in terms of top three QBR, Tom Brady's at number one. Granted, he hasn't pl- he's hasn't played for the four, first four games, but I don't think it would have made much of a difference had he did. Um, then you have uh, Matt Ryan, considering you know that historic game he had a couple weeks ago against Carolina, and then number three, Matt Stafford. I think he's right. at one hundred five. I I think he is, but I, I'll I'll put it this way: he's being talked in the MVP ca- uh, candidacy, and if you were to really take Matt Stafford off the Lions right now and you put Dan Orlovsky the backup, the Lions would be 0-7 right now without Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is the the cog that keeps the machine running. Yeah, well, Bill, I, like I, well, I, I'll say this. I think that part of the reason why Matt Stafford's now getting this attention is because all those other MVP candidates are either not playing right now because they're injured or out for the year like J.J. Watt. You don't have your J.J. Watts out there because players, like I thought Khalil Mack would be defensive player of the year, but he's only gotten a sack because the Raiders' defense got worse than last year. I think that's probably due to Charles Woodson being gone. But, um, and in terms of offense, people don't want to give Tom Brady because, oh, he hasn't played, he didn't play those first four games. Whatever. Okay, right. if you're playing, the, you haven't thrown a pick, and you not, and you have the best um, QBR rating. Your completion percentage hasn't even changed that much. Okay, whatever. You're not MVP candidate. Is Goodell telling you to say all this? Because I wouldn't be surprised. But anyway, so people don't want to count him. Russell Wilson's playing her. Cam Newton. I don't know what happened to him. Um, and Aaron Rodgers is not being as Aaron Rodgers as he should be, or according to the to Green Bay and then all the pundits who love Green Bay. Right. So you see what right. I mean? All those players who normally are in the talks for MVP candidacy are not either stepping up or they're hurt. Right. But that's no fault of Matt Stafford and finally it's not. at least at least he's getting recognition no matter if it's in a year a quote unquote down year. Because, you know, another quarterback that doesn't get a lot of recognition is also Matt Ryan, who's also in the top three of QBR. I mean, yeah. I think know, it's it, took... I think it's between those two who are being considered uh, MVP candidates right now. I mean, and really, if you think about it, Matt Ryan's been a damn good quarterback for a, lo- a long while now. Well, his offense was incomplete. You, oh, yeah. you know his offense was incomplete. Then you get Mohamed Sanu, and you got uh, Coleman, who's actually hurt, and they're scrambling for running backs from what I've heard. But when their offense, when you saw these past few weeks, it was complete. They were uh, they were putting up a lot of points, and Julio Jones was being oh, was getting open. Right. But, but um, I mean... But, Bill, the only thing is the Lions can't stop. If they drop a game that they should win that's going to throw all of this into a mess it, no matter if it's by a by a narrow by a narrow loss or just a route you know it was uh, a garbage to, game to be honest we've already we've already experienced that twice yeah so but you can't do it again bill cuz look 
you have to okay Green Bay I don't think they're the team to beat we both could agree it's the Minnesota Vikings that are the best team in the NFC North right now they're five and one right uh, I mean there's like any team in the NFL they're beatable they are beatable but Bill do you do you think you can beat them in their place I don't know if anyone really can this year it's just if, if, if Sam Bradford has a bad game. You know, they play offense, a lot better on at home than on the road. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, but their offense is nothing compared to their defense. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the thing that's the big problem. If they shut Matt Stafford down, what do you do then? You can't trust the 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 Lions defense to win because it's not only injured, the people that are left out there are not major playmakers, if you ask me. Yeah, Darius, Darius Slay got hurt in this game as well, so that's something to know. I don't know how long he's out. I don't think he's on IR, though, so that's no. good. Ziggy Anza came back, though, was not doing much. He's still not at 100%, but you have other players making sacks for him, so that's good. Good to see other players starting to, like, to do what he can't. And um, one, one last note is that the Lions traded away uh, a linebacker by the name of Kevin Van Noy, a former second-round pick, to the New England Patriots. Now watch this guy get the most sacks out of all the linebacking core in the NFL. <laughs> I don't think so. He was he but was Bill, a bust of a second-round pick. But, Bill, you know what the Patriots are all about, making busts into success, uh, successful players. Oh, what yeah, Didn't but, people deem know, Edelman and Amendola that? I don't know the... Uh, Who's the one that was with the Giants? Which one of them? And the Giants one? just essentially kicked to the curb because they thought he was a bust. No idea. It was, I think honest. it's Amendola, whatever. It was one of them. And then they went to New England and they won a Super Bowl with them. Right. So, uh, but, you it's, know, it's the bill. I, it's just, the Patriots way. I'm I'm still glad that we got rid of... Well, you got Kevin a second Van round... Boy, what'd you get out of it? A second round pick? We got a sixth round pick out of that. Basically, the Lions swapped, uh, swapped uh, from seventh round to sixth round. Yeah. Got well, Bill. Six rounder. Well, Bill, you can maybe use that sixth round pick to trade up later. I mean, I mean, freaking Patriots picked Tom Brady in the sixth round. You just never know who you're gonna get. Yeah, but um. But. Yeah. I'm gonna. What I was trying to say earlier is the the Lions are in a weird spot, and especially considering that we have a tie game this year, which I said we were going to have one, and I actually had my pick in mind. I was going to say Arizona-Minnesota, um, but I guess I got one team wrong. It was Arizona-Seattle, um, and right. that ties always make th uh, playoff contentions complicated. Right. I mean... Seattle is the it, Seattle and Minnesota are the team to, teams to beat if you ask me because they're balanced if and well especially uh, Seattle, but the problem is now Arizona will have a tie to help them and Bill as things stand now Arizona because of that tie they if the play, if the playoffs started now they would get in bec over the Lions because they have um, they have that tie which unfortunate but. That's that's a, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a problem, but not only that, they need to win as many games as they can because this NFC side looks a lot more of a of a feeding frenzy than the AFC, which is pretty much New England and Denver and everyone else. It's not the AFC is not good, but the NFC looks like it's a uh, dog eat dog world. Only the strong really will survive here. Do you know what I mean? Uh, exactly. And so I I think you know the divisions we get to play against are a very much a good thing. Yeah. This year. Yeah. Well, you better beat them all as well as much as you can because it's not going to be. I wouldn't say it's not going to be easy. It's because you got to play Minnesota twice in the same month. And next month you have to play both Minnesota at home and then or over or when I say at home on Thanksgiving, but before that you got to play them over there. And that one, I'm not picking Detroit. Sorry, Bill. I think they they will split at best, but it's going to be a very hard task. Right. So, Bill, and then not only that, you still got to win your division games, which you lost to Chicago, and that was a that was one you needed to win. 
but we'll see what happens. I mean, they just didn't come out to play that game, and they played down to their competition, but that that's, again, you know, it, it's really a wait-and-see type of league, and, you know, if DeAndre Levy comes back, the whole defense will be a lot different than it is right now. All right, Bill, let's move on to the Patriots. Now, like I said, had, Tom, or had Big Ben been here, this would have been game of the week, and this game would not be so one-sided. But to be fair, um, Landry Jones wasn't a liability here. The only time he did something really bad was through. He tried forcing the ball to uh, Antonio Brown, which normally Antonio Brown can make good plays. But Malcolm Butler just picked that off like it was nobody's business quite easily, mind you. I feel like he just cut the route off. It was at least a, a couple yards away from Antonio Brown. But, right. Bill, do you, I don't know what this effect is called, but... Have you ever seen where if you tell somebody you're this like you're like you're this you're a good player you're a elite level player or you're a bad you're bad at this thing and then you just end up becoming whatever they say right it it's sort of like a uh, confirmation <laughs> almost that style yeah. of uh, thing so bill I feel like that's what Malcolm Butler has become because if he's a, if he's this good how the hell did he go undrafted it, sometimes it just happens. It, it, again, you know, the Patriots are masters of picking p players in the bottom of the draft and uh, and undrafted free agents. I mean, Julian Edelman's a seventh round pick. You know, they're they're the kings of getting a lot of value of late round picks or undrafted free agents. And I think part of it is uh, Bill Belichick's coaching because Bill Belichick is a Hall of Fame coach. And the other part is is they bring in people of a very similar mindset, players that want to work and they, they have a, a very big drive to succeed and a big chip on their shoulder. Yep. Well, Bill, the, the ultimate goal of the Patriots, stick it to Roger Goodell. Which I'm totally okay with that goal, but Bill, it should, it what, what? should be the goal. Every, it should be the goal every year. <laughs> yep. All right. So Bill, now let's talk about this game specifically. Which, if you ask me, not much new. Garrett Blunt is playing great, which worries me a little because I'm not saying he's playing on fumes, but he's getting older. So this could be like the last hurrah. He, I think he knows he's gonna cross the. Uh, he's gonna go past the. Uh, the peak and start to de decline but I think he's just doing what he can while he still has that I'm not over the hump yet if that makes Boy. sense yeah yeah he's he's getting his I think he's 29 that's why I'm saying that yeah he's running like it's his last year in the league yeah so my my theory is that if the Patriots win the Super Bowl this year he along with Tom Brady will retire which I think they'll be fine with because I mean I should note about this. This, if people think this Patriots team is dynamic and destructive to enemy to other defenses as is, they're not complete. They're missing one more player, Bill. And guess what? He's practicing now. Right. <laughs> and that is Dion Lewis. Yeah, Dion Lewis is now back. He's now back in practice. Is it just me or is it raining? I can't tell. I think it is raining. Yeah, it's okay. raining. So, Bill, yeah. anyway, that's fine. But, um, so, Bill, Dion Lewis will come back and make this offense even more dynamic, but more importantly, more ways to dissect and just annihilate any good defenses. Right. I mean, just just think of, just think of what they could have out on the field. They could have Dion Lewis... Uh, what's his face? Uh, James White, Legarrette Blunt, Julian Edelman, Chris Hogan, Martellus Bennett, and Rob Gronkowski, all on the field at the exact same time. What do you stop? And all these, all and we're not even throwing Danny Amendola in there, and he's nothing to be sneezed at either. You know, I mean, we're. 
we're just looking at seven players, you know. I mean, there's eight really big weapons. How do you stop an offense that could throw three running backs in the backfield and you don't know who you're going to hand it off to or have two tight end sets and put freaking Edelman over on that side as well? Do you stop Martellus Bennett? Do you stop Rob Gronkowski? Or do you stop Julian Edelman? There's, yeah, there's no one you can that. really stop. There's, someone's going to get open, make a play. It's a re uh, it's not perfect, but I'm not sure there are any defenses here who could really stop that quickly. Because Tom Brady gets yeah. the ball out very fast. Oh, yeah. But um. And what's scary is Tom Brady can diagnose a defense really fast, change to the right play, and just carve up your defense. Yeah. Well, Bill, I mean, he still hasn't thrown a pick. He's still playing great. He's also playing at an MVP level, but like I said earlier, nobody wants to consider him because one, he's Tom Brady, and two, he only played four games, which they, that doesn't that's not enough to justify it. But I say, hey, you're playing like this, not only at his age, but also, you just come back. You're pissed off. You want to take it out on everybody. Stick it to everybody. He could still become an MVP and just stick it to you, the doubters. If he's playing this great, you should consider him just as much as the other two, if you ask me. I don't know if he'll win, but he should still be considered. But there's not much else I think I could say about the Patriots because it's not like what this is nothing new. It technically is, but I just feel like this team's going to get more and more powerful as time goes along. And they're healthy right now. They are they are in good shape. The line is in good shape, but that's why LeGarrette Blunt is making all these good plays right now because the the line is helping him and handling anything that comes their way so it's gonna be real fun when it's Patriots uh, Denver a rematch of the AFC title game uh, next month right I, I yeah it's gonna be a really interesting uh, really interesting game yep all right Bill now let's talk about a game that I would rather forget <laughs> Houston right. Texans, Denver Broncos, Monday Night Football. Brock Osweiler went home, and these Broncos players—they've been saying it all week. They wanted to stick it to him. They wanted him. They wanted to make him pay, and they did. He did not reach the end zone once. Lamar Miller did good, and so did Alfred Blue. But he was well, Miller is playing injured, and he may not play against the Detroit Lions this week, which is fine by me. I would rather shelve my good talent and not let them risk get hurt when this season feels lost to me. I mean, Houston still has a good shot at making it into the playoffs because they play a garbage division. But, Bill, if you ask me, I just don't see this team winning against any of the playoff teams that go up there, and they're not all that great either. Like, if you ask me, Bill, it's going to be a three-way race for playoff spots with the AFC West because they are the best division in football. All three of, like, three, three out of the four teams can make the playoffs, if you ask me. And I'm including the Chargers now in that hunt. It's, it's a very uphill battle for them, but they have the best odds of doing it compared to, let's say, I don't know. The, the Bengals and the Ravens? Usually it's always three. <laughs> the AFC North has been the best division, but I don't think it is anymore. Nope. Uh, I I agree. It's the AFC West. All right, AFC Bill. So brutal. this is one thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say. Brock Osweiler, yeah, you won four games. But if you're getting paid $72 million, which means if we compare it to a recent contract with Andrew Luck, who is getting paid slightly more than him, that means this guy should be playing as well as, I don't want to say Andrew Luck, because Andrew Luck's elite at an extremely elite level, but at the very least, he should be playing like a top 10 QB. But Josh, I hear you say, he's only had so few starts, he still needs to get better. Like, yes, but that presents a contradiction. Why did he want that much money when he just played seven games in when in Denver and somehow he says I'm a top ten QB, I'm gonna get you to the Super Bowl? No. I was skeptical of him. I even doubted him when he was with Denver, even when they beat the uh the Patriots last year. 
And I was always I was skeptical about this signing, and now I really want him out. We can't even kick him out, Bill. He has $37 million guaranteed, so we can't kick him out until after next year. But that $37 million is going to harm the contracts of the future. Be because, look, you got to sign Hopkins after next after this year. Right. Which you might sign him, but then what happens when you got to sign other players who are playing good? Like Jadavion Clowney or Bernardrick McKinney. What do you do with them? How are you going to pay them? Not enough money to go around for everyone. Yeah, and even if this, the when the cap goes up, that cap money is all is going to all, all the way to DeAndre Hopkins. And maybe if there's anything left, that's going to the Jadavian Clowney. Right. I mean, the, the only offshoot of this is that you know, is that uh, the Houston Texans with having DeAndre having a bad year this year because of Brock Osweiler, they could prob they could probably be like, well, you didn't really put up any numbers. Yeah, blah, but blah, blah. I mean. In, in, even any fan could argue that for for Hopkins and say, yeah, but that's because his quarterback was not playing well. Hoyer's right, done better than this. Mallet has done slightly better than this. Even Brandon Whedon has done better than this. <laughs> I would say start Tom Savage, but I'll get to that in a moment. But I can't because we lost our right tackle, but not just for the year, possibly forever. This guy may never play again. He right. tore, um, he tore, uh, what what do you call them again? Let me check. The MCL or ACL? I mean, uh... No, Bill. It's it's um. Let me see. What do they, what do they call it again? You know, what? I'm just gonna check though. I'm gonna check. I they I. At first, I thought I thought it was a uh, patella tendons, but I don't think that's what it is. But I'm just gonna get it right, Bill. But th okay, right. so it's one. It's hard enough to to um. Yeah. Okay. It is patella tendons. I was right. It was patella tendons. Okay. He tore both of his patella tendons in both knees at the exact same time. It's hard enough to break one, but then you break two. Okay. So, right. he's going to be in a wheelchair for at least a month. I'm going to guess two. But, you have to rehabilitate one knee, then both, and then you got to come back. Like, if we have to guess who who's going to come back first, or who has better odds of returning to the football field between this guy and Bridgewater, I'd put Bridgewater. That's just one leg. He can oh. he could possibly come back from that. Not this one. Yeah. You have to rehabilitate both legs. Forget about it. That is, these in and here's one other thing. One of those legs, he already broke that same muscle before. He already tore it once. To come back right. from a second one, that I mean, is easier said than done. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, but it also it also brings up a big question about his body and his knees in particular, and. Do you will you really trust him to stay healthy after this? And my answer would be no. I think he should just retire when when he when he's better because he can't play anymore. I don't think he can come back. I if he can he and play good. Back up at best. Yeah, if he can and come back, that's like NFL uh, uh what do you call comeback player of the year for 3 years straight or whatever cuz that is going to be insanely difficult to come back from. So yeah. Oh yeah. That's the only reason why I say you can't start Matt um Derek Newton or not Derek, Tom Savage yet because first they don't want to start him because they paid this guy a lot of money. He needs to you need to get your money's worth out of him, which I don't think you will anytime soon. <laughs> now the right tackle's exposed, so now they're just gonna they're just gonna pressure right more now. So the Lions might do that. They might put Ziggy Anza to attack the right side of the offensive line. We'll find that out. <laughs> but Bill, but I mean, but Bill, I'm gonna say I really do want, um, I really do want Tom Savage to start at some point this year. I want to see what he can do because 
think of it like this. Do you know why the Browns don't ever really want to release Josh Gordon? Just because you don't want to give, give him up. Yeah. I mean, because that's, a, that's a talent. Yeah. What if he went to somewhere like New England and had a 2,000-yard passing season? Congrats. You look fan. like huge idiots in letting a great player go and have a successful season elsewhere. Right, exactly. So, I don't know if Tom Savage is good, but the thing is, he's not being paid to play like Matt Stafford or Aaron Rodgers. He's just paid to be the backup. I want to see what he could do if he could become a starter. He could be a starter, he may not be. I just want to know for a fact. I mean, people say, oh, he's not a starter. It's like, what? Where's your proof? Oh, that one game he started in, or he didn't start, he had a substitute for Ryan Fitzpatrick in Indianapolis when he was a rookie. And your other sources? Uh, oh, the preseason. The preseason uh, don't I'll, determine shit. I mean, I'll put it. the Texans went 4-0 and in the preseason, and what did that prove? Nothing. They're 4-3 and right now. I'll put it this way. If, if the season is not turning out the way the Texans anticipate it turning out, and they're not in it at the very end, they'll put probably Tom Savage in to see what they got in him. You know, if if the season were to, if let's say the Houston Texans are 6-8 and eight at the very end, and they have two games left, and it looks like Indianapolis is just running away with it. Let's just hypothetically say that. I think they would put Tom Savage in, uh, like, the last two games, sort of see where he is, and who knows? They might keep Brock Osweiler, or they might try to trade Brock Osweiler to a team that doesn't have a quarterback, i.e. Cleveland, and oh try to get some draft picks from them. Would they even ask for draft picks? I think they just want him out. Just take the play. I, I mean, they they could probably get draft picks from Cleveland. Cleveland hasn't had a quarterback yet. Yeah, well, they have so many draft picks. They're gonna. They have a lot of draft picks. You could take a bunch of third rounders or fourth rounders. From yeah, with all the draft picks. picks for these next two years for Cleveland, they would they would make up about half of their whole roster. Like, if you got rid of, like, returning players, not first years, you would have about, like, 30 players who would be recently drafted within three years. So they would all be in rookie contracts, basically. Right. That's that's disgustingly crazy. It's hard to believe if that would even work, but, yeah. I wouldn't mind that, but it won't happen. They won't happen, because, Bill, look. The only other reason why they won't bench him, unless it's like, an, and they won't take him out of the game unless he's hurt. That's the only way he'll get out now. The only way, like, the, if they bench him, that's going to show a sign of weakness from Rick Smith and Bill O'Brien. Because he, their heads will roll if this season doesn't turn out well. Or next oh, season. Yeah, so it I could agree. be one or the other. But, Bill, it's not even their fault. It's not, or should I say, not entirely their fault. Because somebody made this choice. Someone banged the table and said, do it, and this guy has a absolute authority over them. Who am I talking about? Oh, that's the owner of the Houston Texans. Yep. Bob McNair said, go get a quarterback. This team is Super Bowl ready. We need a quarterback to lead us there. That's all we need. And, and so they listened, and they took Rock Osweiler, and they put so much money for him. $72 million for what? A fake, a pretender. As long as Houston has Brock Osweiler, they will look like pretenders. And now I'm hoping when Detroit goes into Houston, Detroit lights up the field, but that and I know it won't happen because Detroit seems to like to play every game close. They'll they'll blow a game, they'll blow a lead when they had a ninety seven percent chance of winning, giving that team a ninety nine percent chance of winning, then pulling off a point five percent miracle. Because that's how Detroit wants to play, Bill. I'm sorry. It sounds it's like I'm shit talking them. And it's true in a way because I don't like that they play things close. They should crush an, a, a bad team or a team that's playing bad, having a bad game 
when that opportunity presents itself, but it's just not the Detroit way, Bill. A win is a win is a win, and that's all I look at it as. I know, Bill, but if, that's just what... If I won I just, 35... The, I just want Detroit to put a, like a 30 or 40 burger on Houston and just show Brock Osweiler this is what a high-paying quarterback is supposed to be looking like. If you can't do any of this once in a while, or at all, you can't even do half of that, you don't deserve to get paid that much money, nor do you deserve to be in this damn league. Go play in arena football or Canadian football. You'll have better odds there. <laughs> it, it's, it's excruciating to watch, Bill. I can't stand seeing this offense. All these players are good. Lamar Miller is great. DeAndre Hopkins is great. Will Fuller is great. CJ Fedorowicz I still think is bad, but he's slowly proving me wrong. But... I, these guys are wasting their talent. We're wasting J.J. Watt's prime years, who's out for the year. But, yeah, I'm actually kind of glad he's out for the year because you don't have to, I don't have to see him, I don't have to see a suffering face through this. Right. Because <laughs> I know he's tired of it. He knows they can go to the Super Bowl. That defense, if we're talking defenses can go to the, who can go to the Super Bowl, that's them. It's them, it's Denver, it's Seattle. It's Minnesota. It's New England. Those are like defenses that can that are Super Bowl pro, uh, ready type of uh, defenses. But no, Houston can't stop the run somehow, which is shocking considering they are a Super Bowl caliber defense. Somehow they can't stop the run. I don't know how, but okay. <laughs> they can't stop the run, and they can't handle uh, they can't handle playoff ready uh, playoff teams. They've gotten slaughtered by Minnesota. By, they got shut up by uh, New England, and they got spanked by Denver. Right. It's horrible. Right. All right, Bill. I'll leave it on that note, and we shall move on. Are you ready? We're going to talk some fan privilege today. Okay. Now, this is going after all those types of fan bases who are basically... So, let's just call some teams out right away. Let's mention Green Bay. Um... New England, yeah, I'm call I'm getting on them too. I have to be fair here. Pittsburgh and especially Dallas. So you know what pisses me off, Bill? All these K Dallas players who say they've been fans for a while, say they loved Romo, want him out, saying that he is he is holding them back. Let's get rid of Romo. I don't want him here anymore. We Dak Prescott is the guy. Yeah, we know he's the guy. We got to have Dak Prescott leading. No Romo to get in the way. What's that? You want to get rid of two, one of your two good quarterbacks? You have two good quarterbacks on your roster. You're saying that's bad? You want him out? You should be keeping both of them. I understand that Roman want, wants to play. He might. He's probably not going to play for Dallas unless an injury happens to Dak Prescott. But they should right. be trying to keep him there and not trying to kick him out. And fans should not be acting like that. They should be thankful for Romo. He's been holding this damn fort all together. They've been trying to build players around for him. And now you have Dak Prescott. Well, we have the players for Dak Prescott already. Because they were meant for Romo. You're complaining about that. You're saying, oh no, I want Romo out. Like, no, you want, you're terrible. You have no respect for this guy after all he's done for you. You hated him when he was not when he lost close games at the end of the season when you really couldn't have gone to the Super Bowl anyway. You were a very flawed team. But not only that, you loved him when you were winning. You loved him when you won every game on the road. And then right. last year when he was hurt, oh, I hate Romo. We need a better quarterback. Nah, nah, nah. And now you have a better quarterback. It's like, ah, oh, fuck Romo. Get him out of here. You guys never liked him. Stop saying you've loved him all your life. You never really did. You, are deep inside, are glad you have a chance to get him out. But I, I will say this. If Dak Prescott becomes injury prone at some point, you can have, go back to the same old ways as before. Cowboys fans piss me off because they act like they're the most loyal. Then some, some pundits say, oh, they're the most loyal fan base in the NFL. Possibly all the sports. Yeah. Okay. So how about two years ago? That year where they were going, they were winning every game, but just before they really started to hit a stride. You know, when Houston went over there, there were more Houston fans. Tony Romo had to play a silent count because Houston fans were that loud. 
It's like, oh, look, Houston's an hour away. Of course they'd come to that game. Okay, but no excuses. If you're the home team, you should be out. You should be outperforming and be in out. How do I put it? You should have the majority in that stadium over the visiting team. Okay, right. so I, how about I the first game of the season against San Francisco? This was when they, the last year with John Harbaugh, so this was the end of their glory days. But they put you in your place. They schooled you. They made you look like a joke. And right. what happened? What did I notice? Even when that, before that game even kicked off, there were more 49ers fans than Dallas fans. So, what's that about being there all the time? Meanwhile, look at Houston, who please, this team sucks almost every year. And even if they go positive, you see, and they're not, they're not playoff bound. They're not really playoff bound. They still fill right. the crowds way better than you. Houston has a loyal fan base. Even Cleveland's more loyal. The Jets are loyal. Those are bad teams those two were playing this week. But I have to give some respect for them because they go to games knowing that this team is shit. And they're never going to win a Super Bowl anytime soon, but they still go. Unlike right. you. You're the supposed loyalist fan base. You care for your team. No, you're just bandwagonists. You show up when your team is winning and you want to leave. You don't want to be part of the ride when they when things get bumpy. Get the fuck over yourself. Even the like the Packers are more loyal than you. I haven't seen them leave a state, leave their state, their stadium. The Patriots have done it recently when they got shut out by Buffalo. So they fall into the same bus too, in a way. Although it's one instance in a recent string of years, but I could see I'm starting to see a little bit of worry because I've had a little. I mentioned it a couple times. Where what happens when Tom Brady leaves? How is this fan base going to be? Are they going to be stuck up? Are they going to be so? Pr privileged. It's like, oh yeah, we've won five Super Bowls. Oh, or we won four Super Bowls already. And we, 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 need to, we need to win by 20 points or more minimum. Oh wait, there's a, there's a fan base that already thinks like that, and that's Green Bay. <laughs> okay, Bill, remember that playoff, that last game for the playoffs where it was a fight for the division between Detroit and Green Bay at Lambeau, and right. Green Bay oh, was catching yeah. up. They cut the lead from Detroit to two, and they were booing Aaron Rodgers. What? Yep. Your ca your team is catching up. It's one thing if it was forty to seven now, but you were catching up. You were two points behind, and you still boo him. What's wrong with you? He's a Hall of Fame uh, qu uh, quarterback, and you're getting mad at him. You guys are right. stupid. I mean, and. Along with that is this idea from certain teams that other teams that are in your division are not as good as you ever, and that they'll never be as good as you ever. Like, Green Bay looks at Detroit, and Detroit is never going to be great. You know, that's that's a misnomer, because eventually Detroit is going to have a great team, and just continuously beat well, up on Green Bay. Let's use another example in that same division. People thought Minnesota were never going to come out of out of being bad as Detroit. Right. And then they got Bridgewater, and then they their defense came together, and then look what happened this year. They they put a clown suit on Green Bay. And their and their uh, stadium debut. Right. And yeah. now Minnesota is the team to beat in the division, not Green Bay. It's it's Minnesota. Oh yeah, by a long shot. Yeah, if any, if I, any of those teams want, like any of the three teams want to have a chance at getting the division crown, they have to at least split with Minnesota. That's what? easier said than done, but that's what they need to do. But it goes to show, Green Bay has always been like, yeah, we have, the, we're the kings of the North. And then look what happened. They lost it last year, close, mind you, but now. Minnesota could potentially just run away with it. They could run away with the NFC North crown. And Green Bay would have to settle for a for a wild card spot, which that's also not guaranteed. Because look, you have the fight between Seattle, Arizona. Both of them, I feel like they're going to make the playoffs. And then you have the NFC, the NFC South, which will just have probably Atlanta, if you ask me if I had to guess right now. But then the NFC East is somehow getting better. All teams are positive, and... There's a legit shot you could have Dallas, um, 
Philadelphia, or even Washington and New York have a chance of taking the other spot. Right. So Green Bay is not guaranteed. I mean, they're lucky they beat New York because they have that edge, but can they do the same with the rest of the division? Can they do the same to Philly and Washington? Because Dallas has that edge over them already. They knocked them down in their place. Right. I'll I'll just put it this way. You know, Green Bay is on a downward trajectory. Right Fine now. by me. And it's it's going to continue. And it's sort of like what uh, Green Bay experienced in the later years of the Brett Favre era before they became really good again and they got rid of them. Uh, Green Bay, for a certain period of time with Brett Favre, was – at best, an eight and eight team, sometimes a seven and nine team, and really the only reason they were winning games was because of Brett Favre. It, it, they that team started going downhill, and I see the same thing happening now with Aaron Rodgers. They're starting on that downward trajectory, and a lot of the other teams in the division, Detroit and Minnesota, are going to be in the driver's seat for a while. But that's just looking at it from the next four years. Yeah. So I want to spend the last It'll part of this. I want to spend the last part of this just going back to Dallas because this is my favorite argument from somebody that I know, Andrew. This is on you. This is I'm talking about you. We had a bad year last year. We went four and twelve. So we should win the Super Bowl this year. Yes, you win with your rookie, which that's a that's a tall order enough as is. But now. Let me get this straight. You're saying that because you that you went one bad year out of a bunch of eight and eights, that you deserve like five Super Bowls, basically. Even though you already have five. Okay. Okay. Whatever. You've won five Super Bowls. I don't care if you didn't live to see it. You still have all these. You have all these rings that you don't know what to do with. I mean, it's the same shit you hear from Pittsburgh. Oh, we're having a bad moment right now. We gotta win the Super Bowl or the next one, and the one after that to make up for all these bad memories. Yes, you have one really bad year out of what a bunch of eight and eights. Teams like Cleveland and New York would kill for that, if you ask me. Right. But okay, whatever. You you're saying that you deserve a bunch of Super Bowls. Why? Because you're the Dallas motherfucking Cowboys. There are other teams who are, I think, are better than you in the past few years. If we compare teams of the past few years that were better and had shots at the Super Bowl or were robbed for various reasons. Detroit should have beat Dallas a couple years ago, but then that flag, at the very least, it should have been deemed a free play. I would have taken a free play over just nothing and it's fourth down. I would have taken a replay of a third down. Be like, say, oh, these two fouls intersect, replay third down. But no, they just picked up the flags and it was fourth down. So it was a, it was a counted play, whatever. I thought Detroit was better. It should have been Detroit. Seattle, don't know how that would have gone, but yeah. Arizona also was a, a team that should have won a couple of years ago, but then the Rams, who seem to play only good when they play against their division, injured or knocked out Carson Palmer for the year, and then their backup of the, went out. So, yeah. Right. There are plenty of teams who are good that should have won or, and didn't go for whatever reason, and some, especially by refs, are just unfortunate. Thanks to the Calvin Johnson rule, right, Bill? Oh, yeah. F that rule. Yeah, and then there was the tuck <laughs> rule, which that meant Oakland should have gone to the Super Bowl. But, yeah, that didn't happen. Yep. But anyway, so, yeah, my my biggest gripes, I'm taking mostly shots at Dallas fans, but these other types of fan bases with a shit ton of Super Bowls, they I'm throwing them under the bus, too, because... They are not. They are not lucky either. And like I said, I even got on New England's ass for this. They left their own stadium too. Dallas fans are bandwagonists. They're only there when they're winning. That's why I can never believe many Dallas fans. Like I only, even my own grandparents show me examples of this. They, they don't want to talk about Dallas when they lose bad, but when they're winning, it's like yeah, yeah. I've always been a Dallas fan for so long. Get out of my sight, jackass. And I, before I hear someone say, hey, you like many, more than one team, you're in no position, don't tell me how to be a fan, then don't tell me I can't like more than one team. I think I, there, is, there is no real rules of being a fan, if you ask me. Maybe there's certain like, unsung rules. That's kind of one of them. But to be honest, I think it's okay if you like more than one team. In some, if you really just like the sport that much, 
I think it's fair. There are some people, like, if you really did love your team so much, you would never watch the Super Bowl or any other football game if it wasn't your team playing. Like, here's an example. Who here who is not a Cleveland Indians or a Chicago Cubs fan watching the World Series? I'll watch it. I wanted it to be my Rangers, but I'll still watch it. What about last year's NBA Finals? If you weren't a bandwagonist Golden State Warrior, which, oh yeah, where are those Golden State Warrior fans right now, huh? After my Spurs knocked him on their asses, super team my ass. Yeah, we're, so anyway, so who watched the, who watched especially Game 7 of Golden State and Cleveland? I did, and I hate both teams. I'm a Spurs fan through and through, and I still watched it. Why? Because I find the sport entertaining. Right. So, if if you're going to say, oh, you should strictly like one team, okay, then you should strictly never watch any football game. Maybe highlights, I will let it slide, because they're fucking highlights. Like, but you would never watch a full game of, a, of another team, of any other team, if your team isn't involved. So, like, I'm a, Michi- I'm a Michigan football guy, but I'll watch Michigan State. You want to watch, uh, watch Harbaugh make your team great again, Bill? I'm a, I'm a Michigan guy through and through, so. <laughs> yeah, Bill, you're enjoying San Francisco suffering. But to be fair, I, I'm fine with San Francisco hitting some bad years because you know, they they hey. I mean, I I blame it mostly on the organization, but they have plenty of Super Bowls to sustain themselves for a bit. Oh yeah. And well, I know I, this might sound a little contradicting, but Oakland has three. But you know what? I'm giving them a bit of a pass because they've had bad years, but their fan base. It's always supporting them. They don't want them to leave Oakland. Right. And whether they go or not, that's not the point. But they've been here. They've been for their team the whole time. Even when they're having rough years, way worse than Dallas. And Dallas is like, yeah, I'm not going to fill up that crowd. I'm not going to fill up that stadium until they're 14 and 4 or, four, or 13 and 3. But okay. Right. So, yeah, I, could, I would give Oakland a pass because, look, their fucking fan base is as dedicated as it gets compared to Dallas compared to uh, New England to an extent. Like, Green Bay and Pittsburgh, I will at least give credit. They fill the damn stands when they can. Right. They are way more loyal than that. One little shot of Pittsburgh, I found this thing, like, on uh, NFL memes. It's a, it's a chart where, it, it, did um, Pittsburgh win, or did they lose? You say, no, they lost. Pittsburgh fans will gloat about their team history, like, oh yeah, we have six Super Bowls. But if you if they win, they are like, ha! In your face, other team. We sure kicked your ass. You suck. We're going to win. And then they brag about their history again. It doesn't matter. You still get them talking about how great they are regardless. So, yeah, that's going to do for fan privilege, Bill. Now, before we go on to the other games, just real quick, Bill, that kicker, he's cut. He's gone. Josh Brown is gone. Right. And And he deserves to be gone. Yep. Yep. They didn't want to kick him out because, oh, we needed our kicker for uh, for this week against London. Bill, what do you have to say to that? I I I say that they should have cut him before the London game and just used their punter for their kicker. That's the backup plan in the first place anyway. I, I, I know why they did it. They wanted to win the game and then, you know, I don't cut think they needed him. But they... If if they had a shred of dignity, they would have cut him before the game. So, the, the, I mean, overall, they should have cut him in the first place uh, just because you want a kicker for the London game because, you know, the yeah. other kickers won't have a, uh, you know, passport is kind of a fluky logic. Yeah. Just saying. But, Bill, here's the thing. The, the Giants should pay for this because they stuck with this guy. The organization said, we believe in Josh Brown. Even though he's like saying, yeah, I, I beat up my wife more than 20 times and I'm admitting to that and I want to own up to that. It's like, prove it. They don't believe you. It's like, but I just said, prove it, damn it. That's how, that's what the New York Giants were. They were denying what this guy was saying and saying that he is a good person. When he's admitting he's a bad person, it's one thing if you say, oh, this guy is guilty when before the courts have decided that he's guilty. But if this guy is coming out saying, yeah, I'm guilty, I did it, yeah, punish me. Take me, take me to jail, let's get my trial over with and give me my sentence. I'm, uh, I'm guilty to it. If he's admitting to it, then let him 
let him face his let him face his due judgment. But right. the Giants were so insistent because of this one game, because of one game, and they wanted they wanted to protect it. So I say, you know what? If if this doesn't pass, this shows really how fucked fucked up Goodell's standards are. Look. You gave Tom Brady a four-game suspension. You fined the Patriots one million dollars. You took their first-round pick of this year. You're going to take next year's second-round pick. But you only gave this guy a one-game suspension. That's it. If you do not do more, if you don't find the Giants, you don't take away their draft picks, if I had to choose, I would take away. I would do a similar punishment to the Giants. Take a first-round pick and then take a second-round pick. I would say more, but you know what? That I'll take that. It's late justice, but I'll better late than never. I say. I say. So, right. You have you have to make the Giants learn a lesson because look, we're the post uh, Ray Rice world now. Goodell's saying, yeah, we're better than this. We're gonna take. We're gonna uh, treat uh, sexual assault like uh, seriously. We're gonna take it seriously and ext- severe punishly or punish severely. How bad? Like I punish people, punish players how uh, for what they do. Right. And if he doesn't do anything here to the Giants, it shows he when when the when the spotlight isn't fo- uh, focused on him, when he's not being called out by every news media outlet everywhere, he's just gonna let it pass. Yeah, but if the but if the fucking Patriots did it, if this was some player in the Patriots, this would have been a big thing. The Patriots would have been docked of more draft picks. But no, it's the Giants. It's another team that Goodell wants to go up there and win a Super Bowl. He wants any team that isn't the Patriots to win. This wasn't a kicker, and this was a bigger name player. They it would be a whole different story. But since it's since it's Josh Brown, kicker of the Giants, you know, he doesn't believe it to be. I I, I just think it's serious. because of the fact they don't want it's idiotic. I just don't. I just think it's the fact that it's not the Patriots. But mind you, I have this. Goodell has this huge stigma for the Patriots. But can you blame me? I mean, you get a guy who supposedly, when you, nobody can even really prove, no one has come out and found definitive proof that he did or didn't do it. I say he didn't. If there's no proof he did do it, so how could you say he did do it? But we've been through that debate so many times. But this guy, he's admitted that he's done it. And right. there's so much things, there's things that back that up. And he's yeah. just getting, he got a one-game suspension. Goodell, Goodell, right. you need to set an example again. This is your job as a commissioner. When a team or a player goes out of line, they need to pay the price. Not just from what society gives them, but what you must give them as like as an organization. Right, yeah. And you won't do it. You won't do it. You don't deserve that position. But this guy has so much power, even if the 32 owner said, or in this case 31, said, Hey, he needs to pay a price. Oh, I'm the owner. You have you can't make me do anything. I have more power than you. Okay, this this flawed uh, system of power with no checks and balances in it, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Can't stop him. So he right. chooses to do nothing. That's the point. The fact so far he's done nothing. He's not hinting at doing anything. It angers me. The the media, if they weren't focusing on Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton bitching at each other, they might have been focusing on this. Maybe. But yeah. anyway, Bill, I'll just mention a couple games before we go on. We had the big tie in um, in Arizona, which I, f- I found that game fun, Bill, for two reasons. The kick, both kickers, it seems. There was Josh Brown spread a curse on kickers this week because, look, the Washington football team kicker missed bad. Like, here's how hard it is, Bill. He not only kicked a, f- a field goal up all the way up in the air, to hit the upright, but the top of the upright. That takes skill to hit. Right. And in the case of the tie game, Arizona, Arizona's kicker botched it. He hit a kick up on, on an upright, and it didn't go through. So botched that one, so I was like, okay, Seattle's got this one. They're going to go down the field in 10 seconds, which is what they did. And yeah, 
guess what? Hauschka misses a 19-yard uh, field goal attempt wide left, and it's a tie. <laughs> Which is still hilarious. It It is hilarious. It's just... Hauschka's a good kicker, and it, you see the stats like, oh yeah, he misses kicks it uh, in Arizona. But it's like, oh no, this is a 19-yarder. He should make it. It's very easy. You don't need to do much effort here. Right. And he exactly. botches it. It's one thing if it just narrowly missed. No, this thing went wide left. So wide left, it almost, I don't think it hit the net. That's how yeah. wide left it did. I think it hit a play a person in the stand, which I don't think he's gonna get fined for that. But <laughs> no. okay, how can you control that? that? Those kicks made the game enjoyable because that was the most fun part. That those botched kicks, one after another, I laughed like a maniac because how do both teams miss easy field goals and tie the game? Right. Exactly. Exactly. It just. The luck of the draw, you know, just a weird coincidence. Yeah, so Bill, another game I want to mention, those Oakland Raiders, Bill. I, yep. Derek Carr has li learned literally every, learned from every flaw that his brother made and has become a better quarterback than it. Those weaknesses that uh, uh, his brother David Carr had, he has none of them. It's it is impressive. So in the case of like the like Peyton Manning, Eli Manning debate, Peyton was better. But that was the big brother. Now the little brother has outshined the big brother in just what, three years? Yeah, I mean this is Stephen what, Carr really didn't stand a chance, but you know, yeah. This is what I love, Derek Bill. All that hype over the Jaguars, the Titoons. Teams like them who are like, oh, these are young teams on the rise. And on Cleveland as well. And Cleveland's 0-7. The Titans are now 4-4. Four and four, And the Jaguars, 2-5. and five. Right. It was... I find that humorous. Well, not the Titans part. I really wish they were 0-7. But hey. I can't get what I want all the time. But, Bill, these Raiders, 5-2. and two, They're still on top of the division because... um. Because Denver lost their only division game so far, but I'm confident that it's going to be between like the two wild card spots are going to be filled by two of the other AFC West teams. So it's going to be either the Chiefs, the Raiders, the De Broncos, or the Chargers because it feels that wide open. I agree. The Chargers have the hardest battle; they have the most uphill battle to do. But Joey Boza's playing great. He is. It is a shame that they didn't sign him sooner, Bill. If they did, they probably would be four and three or four, five and two. Joey Bosa should have just signed his rookie co contract and not bitched about yeah. some of these. Yeah, classes. I know. Every other rookie does uh, signs their contract, gets in camp, and does their thing. Yep, he's probably still going to get defensive rookie of the year because I can't see anyone else who could do it. Right. Exactly. But, um, it makes you wonder if only Dallas got this guy, because Dallas apparently wanted him too. Holy shit, that defense would be playing for real. Minus the corners, because the cornerbacks on Dallas' side are shit. I mean, what? it's so bad when you run into each other. Like the old, <laughs> the old outfield classic, I got it, I got it. And neither gets it. Yep. And they both run. I mean, he got it or he got knocked out, but... Yeah, Bill, I'm excited for these Raiders, but one thing, the refs were stupid in this game. They When uh, um, Crabtree caught a touchdown, he threw a ball up, uh, and it, uh, according to them, it looked like he did the throat slice thing, which is a taunt, which is a fair foul to call, but no, he didn't. He didn't do it. Like, the, like CBS literally got a replay and showed him that whole part where they flagged him. He didn't do anything close to that. And I don't know if he's going to get a fine, but if he gets fined, I would appeal that. Because it's like any sane man would just need to look at the replay. It's like, did, did it look like he did a um, uh, throat slash remark? No. See, and that brings up my issue with the, the personal foul rule. Because that's a personal foul, and that would have been one of two. And, you know, if, what if he gets called for an actual personal foul? 
and then he's out of the game because of uh, of an idiotic uh, uh, idiotic thing like that. You know, I mean, it's I I understand why they are doing it, but I still don't like it. I still think it should be. Well, if around, they prove but... it's wrong, those refs are gonna pay the price. Remember, Bill? They they don't get that ex they don't get those extra games to uh to yeah they they don't get bonuses and then they don't go for the Super Bowl you know I mean the more mistakes you make the less likely you're going to the Super Bowl yep so Bill <laughs> the the best thing oh I I am really excited Derek Carr I feel he's going to make the Pro Bowl. This year, it's yeah. feeling really good. He's going to reach all pro status, hopefully. I don't know if he will. He might reach just short of that, but I think he's going to possibly be Pro Bowl bound. The only reason why I say he's not is because the Raiders are not talked about that much, even though they're 5-2, and two, Bill. Right. But, yeah. Anyway, are you ready, Bill, for the picks? Oh, man. Pick. Time, yes. Thursday night already happened, recording this on a Friday, but we both picked the Titans, and they shut out the Jaguars in the first half of this game. DeMarco Murray is hurt, from what I've heard, which that should have been a reason why people were hesitant to get him, but hey, they still won. The Titans are very much alive in this division, especially if Houston loses this week. Right. All right, Bill. So, we'll start with the London game which is the Washington football team at the Cincinnati Bengals. I've got the Bengals doing this. They, I think they, they want to stay alive in that division because it is a mess with Big Ben out. So they need to capitalize and just beat Washington and get and break even. I've got Cincy winning this one. I also have Cincinnati winning. I think Tyler Eifert is going to have a big game in this game. Next up, the Kansas City Chiefs at the Indianapolis Colts. I have Kansas City. This is a rematch of that of that playoff game, Bill, that 45-44 playoff game where the Colts came back and won. I think Kansas City, their offense is playing better now. They're hitting a streak just like last year, which is scary. They, I think the Chiefs will go to Indy. I wouldn't say shut them out, but they're definitely going to play way better than the last time. I agree. I also have the Kansas City Chiefs beating Indianapolis. Indy just has no defense, and they can't rely on Andrew Luck to, you know, do everything for them. I got the Chiefs. Easy win. Next up, the Arizona Cardinals at the Carolina Panthers. You know, Bill, this would have been a great game if either of these two teams were had more wins under their belts. But, Bill, I'm going to go with Arizona because Carolina, I just don't see them. I don't see them coming out of this in, in one piece. Well, the whole season, I mean. And Arizona, if they want to stay in the race, they need to win as many games as they can. If they want to take that... If they want to get that division crown and that bye week, they have to keep winning and hope Seattle loses some games because Seattle's only lost one game. Arizona's lost three. They need to start winning now. Yep, I agree. I have Arizona as well beating the Panthers. Uh, I think Arizona's uh, throw the football all you know, Bill, the yard on them. Everyone was comparing the Panthers to the Warriors last year, and now both of them are looking weird in a weird shape, so I think that's very fitting. It's <laughs> fine by me. All right, next up, the Oakland Raiders at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oakland decided to stay in Florida as they continue its conquest. I mean, they're called the Raiders for a reason, right, Bill? <laughs> right. And they're gonna re they're gonna claim Florida as their territory as they spank the Buccaneers. Cra I expect Crabtree and Amari Cooper to get touchdowns uh, each. I agree. I also have Oakland uh, pretty easily defeating the Buccaneers. All right. Next up, the Seattle Seahawks at the New Orleans Saints. I'm. This is the uh, Jimmy Graham revenge game. You see, and uh, I remember Drew Brees was like, uh, "What? I didn't know they were gonna trade uh, Jimmy Graham. I'll miss him." Yeah, you're gonna miss him when he gets two touchdowns on your ass. 
<laughs> what do you got, Bill? Well, I've got the CL Seahawks easily crushing the Saints. The Saints defense is horrendously bad. All right. So next up, the Detroit Lions at the Houston Texans. I'm going with Detroit. I want them to drop 30 points on the Texans, so maybe they'll start considering benching Brock Osweiler because I can't stand seeing him, and I want him to know exactly what a high-paid quarterback is supposed to play like. <laughs> I've also got the Lions, but it's going to be a close game. I'm going to be nervously just... Bill, you better watch this stuff. game. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm going to try to. I want, I, I want to talk to you while we're playing through this or watching this game happen. Uh, All right, Bill. Next up, the New England Patriots at the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo wants a, wants to get a serious sweep, but no, you got to you angered Bill Belichick, especially Rex Ryan saying, "Oh yeah, I had my, from my inside sources, I knew they were going to start uh, Jacoby Brissett." Well, you know what? I don't think you need your sources to tell you that Tom Brady's starting, and he's mad. He's mad at everybody, and you're just in his way. He's going to shut you out in your place to stick it to you, and I hope. They won't say it, they won't be gloating, but I just hope someone, anyone in that Patriots locker room, takes a shot at Rex Ryan for gloating after a win. You don't do that after, if you somehow beat the Patriots. The Patriots are going to crush the Bills. That, that's just flat out. Also, no, no Shady stop. McCoy. They don't stand a chance without him. He was their Jenga piece, and now they fall. Next up, the New York Jets at the Cleveland Browns. Ah, uh, this is the Factory of Sadness Bowl. Two pain franchises. And I'm going to go with the Jets. Fitzpatrick is also playing angry because the whole ownership didn't believe in him. I, I, I don't think anyone would, be, would think starting Geno Smith was a bit wise idea. But, hey, whatever works here. <laughs> I've got the Jets easily beating the Browns. That would it's, mean, it's Bill, be... the the goal, it's halfway there. We're halfway there. <laughs> it's halfway there, and I, I, I hope it happens. Next up, the San Diego Chargers at the Denver Broncos. This game, I mean, San Diego was lucky because if Boza wasn't there, they probably wouldn't have beat the Broncos, but... I don't think they'll get that luxury this time. I have Denver winning this one. I also have Denver uh, winning this game. I think Trevor Simeon's on throw all over that defense. Next up, the Green Bay Packers at the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta has lost games. That some of them they should have won. But I think now they need to, they need to get their act together and wake up and beat a good team, a good enough team, I should say. They're not a great team at all, but they should beat Green Bay. I think Julio Jones will have two touchdowns against this bad Green Bay defense. I think, yeah, I think so too. I think the Falcons are going to stomp the Packers. Next up, the Sunday night game, the Philadelphia Eagles at... The De uh, Dallas Cowboys. Hey, Bill, I forgot about to mention this with the, with the Chargers. Melvin Gordon has more touchdowns than Houston has altogether. <laughs> That's sad, isn't it? Oh, jeez. It's bad, but anyway, to the game. I have Dallas winning this one because I think they're just going to split. And the the hype train for Dallas continues and all the bandwagons fans are starting to pour over they're leaving the carolina bus to get on the Dallas bus that's what they're doing i've got the Dallas Cowboys winning but Carson Wentz showed me something against the Vikings defense and it would not surprise me if the Eagles won yeah well jim schwartz is going to have something special for these two rookies oh yeah next up the Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears. Minnesota's got this one. I wouldn't be surprised if they shut out Chicago, especially since Jay Cutler is starting. I've also got the uh, sh uh, I've got the Minnesota Vikings crushing Chicago. Yep. All right, Bill. Next week's Thursday game. 
Next week's Thursday game is the Atlanta Falcons at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to go with Tampa Bay to steal this one. I think the, these Bucks can be feisty at times, and I think this is just one that's going to be taken away from Atlanta that they're going to not really miss, if you ask me. And I've got the Falcons crushing the Buccaneers very easily. All right, Bill. I think that'll do it for this video. Do you have anything else to say? I think I'm good. All right, then. We'll see you guys next week.